for a look at the air show and everything else that's happening in the airline industry. We welcome Seth Kaplan, managing partner of Airline Weekly, live for us from Fort Lauderdale. Seth, uh, welcome to the show. Tell us about the Dubai Air Show. Who's, who was the big winner? Who was the big loser? Well, I don't know if there were any big losers, but Boeing, if anything, was certainly the, the bigger winner uh, of the two major manufacturers. You know, it, it's new 777X, which it really sort of rushed to start selling, wasn't maybe quite ready to do it. Turns out to be a big hit. It's flying off the shelves. Airbus, having spent many years trying to market the A380, that double-decker plane that that passengers love, but that airlines haven't been buying in as great a numbers, struggling to catch up with wide bodies now that, that airlines do like, something like the A350. But but Boeing, having really focused for a while on, on airplanes that, that simply airlines like better, uh, is in the lead right now in terms of what came out of the Dubai Air Show. S Seth, why, why do you think the, um, you know, when the 380 was first being invented, there was a lot of discussion, and Boeing basically said, and they've said it publicly, that, look, there's a very small demand for the A380. In fact, we think there's a much higher demand for the 787 and ultimately for the 777. The 380, is it a success? It's not, Phil. Uh, again, passengers love the plane. The problem is that, you know, in this case, Boeing was really right. Yes, there was some demand for the plane, but not enough to justify the program. You know, back, by the way, when Airbus was first developing the A380, fuel prices were a lot lower than they are now. So in Airbus's defense, it was looking at an industry that was at the time growing much more rapidly than it is now, growing not only in places like the Arabian Gulf, like China, certainly, but even back then in Europe and North America. Well, then fuel got rather expensive, and that meant airlines needed higher fares in order to break even. And to get those, they simply had to fly less. They had to take supply out of the market. Air travel became unaffordable for some people. And so this future that Airbus pictured of these very, very crowded airports where, it, you know, you, the only way to add capacity would be with a larger plane because you can't add more flights. Yeah, because, it didn't really because I want to go from a crowded airport into a crowded plane. Um, the the 777X, okay, it's two engines, it's a wide body, 300-some passengers. The new one, what's the difference between the new X, X, or I should say, versus the old 777? Yeah, well, the difference is that it's even more efficient. You know, Boeing has a current big hit on its hands in the 777-300ER in particular. That's, that's one version of the 777. And the reason airlines love that plane so much is because it's really not all that smaller than the A380, but it only has two engines. It, it can fit at most, let's say, normal airport gates. So it, it burns less fuel, a whole lot less fuel, considering that it carries nearly as many passengers, and you don't need to treat it as specially. So airlines right. love that. And when Boeing says, hey, we've got something even better, airlines are interested. I, I Seth, I got to ask you something very controversial that's come out this week. The, uh, the FCC is proposing to potentially allow people like you and I, which would be awful for our neighbor nearing passengers, to talk on the phone in the middle of the flight. I can't even imagine if I was in that middle seat and the guy on the right and the girl on the left were talking on the phone, I think I would go absolutely crazy. Is this a good idea for the industry? Yeah, Phil, you and I should just keep talking as loudly as we want, right, to, to, to convince them that uh, maybe they should think twice. You know, it, look, it's, it's clearly safe, and it's being done in some parts of the world. That's no longer a question. But, right, you know, whether we want that woman at the uh, supermarket line talking loudly behind us last night or, or, that, or that guy at the restaurant this afternoon sitting next to us on a long-haul flight, doing that is an entirely separate question. Well, I mean, it's something I mean, look, that airlines are going to take into consideration. Standing in line in a grocery store, I can run away from the... the right. The, 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 some crazy... <laughs> I, I'm sitting next... I am standing stuck in my seat belt because the flight attendant says I can't leave. This is a problem. I, I think passengers might have a little pushback here as to how much you want to use your phone on board a plane. Yeah, and, and some of the airlines in the U.S. certainly have said that their passengers have expressed that, have expressed that they're not all that excited about this. You know, in the end, it's going to be a question of dollars and cents. You know, charging for cell phone uh, calls is, is going to be profitable, narrowly defined. But yes, is it going to turn off more people than then it will attract, and are people going to flock to the airline that doesn't allow it and you know, ship some share onto that airline? That's what we'll have to watch. Because if there's one thing I've learned, it's that sometimes you can't listen to what people say. You have to watch what they do. So let's see if people really hate this as much as they so, say they're going to. So somehow I think uh, sales of those noise-canceling uh, headphones they have that they sell uh, probably will go up if this thing goes through. Seth Kaplan, have a great weekend uh, joining us you live too, from Phil. Florida. Thank you very much.